Okay, so today we're looking at the tangent function in 7.6, and there's two main ideas that we're going to cover uh, in this section. One is looking at the tangent function and its definition and interpretation on the unit circle, remember circle of radius 1, and then we'll look at its graph um, and why it is both very similar and very different to sine and cosine, the kind of periodic functions we're used to so far. So how we define tangent is, uh, is pretty nice. So we, for any point x, y on the unit circle, we know that the x distance over for the angle theta, this here is given by cosine of the angle. And we know that the height, all right, from here to here, this is represented by sine of theta when the radius is 1, right? So we know that this point is really equal to cos theta, sine theta, for all angles of rotation as we uh, spin around the unit circle. And if it's a larger circle than that, right, we scale it by r. So r times cos theta, r times sine theta. So how we define tangent is in terms of sine and cosine. So tangent is defined in terms of sine and cosine. This is really important, especially when you get to calculus, to remember to break things down into sine and cosine. And how it's defined is sine, cos sine of theta over cos of theta. So for any angle theta, tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So the sine of the angle over the cosine of the angle. So what does this mean? Well, we have now a ratio of the sine to the cosine, which really means the ratio of the height over the horizontal distance. What is a ratio of a height over horizontal remind you of? Perhaps a rise over run? And that's exactly right. This is the, right, how far up divided by how far over. Um, so this tells you the slope of the radius, this ratio. That's one way that you can think about tangent to kind of make sense of where it comes from. So it's the slope of the radius, so at any given theta, so let's say I'm out here now. And let's actually give this a... Uh, a value. Let's say, let's clear this out for a moment. And let's say that this new theta equals what? Uh, 5 pi over 6. Okay, so we're in quadrant 2. So tangent of theta is the tangent of 5 pi over 6. This is the slope of the radial arm of a rotation of 5 pi over 6 radians, which is really 150 degrees, right? So if we were to go in and find what this value is, 10 of 5 pi over 6 to find what is that slope, we would first take the sine of 5 pi over 6 over cos of 5 pi over 6. And we know that the sine of 5 pi over 6, well, if we think of the reference angle here of pi over 6, then what do we have? Well, we know that the sine of sine of pi over 6 
is 0.5. All right, that's one of those nice angles to know, but if you don't remember it, Desmos or your calculator is always there, making sure you're in radians, since this is angle measured in radians. So we know that the top is one half. over and the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2 right so radical 3 over 2 here and then to compute this we can just carry out the division so 1 half divided by radical 3 over 2 is 1 half times 2 over radical 3 which then leaves me with 1 over radical 3. So note that the tangent of 5 pi over 6 is, neg is 1 over radical 3. Now, I did forget something, which was the cosine here is negative, right? Because we're in quadrant 2. So this should really be negative here, which makes this negative 1 over radical 3. So that's one example of how to compute the tangent, and it also tells you right what the slope of this line is here. Delta y over delta x. So it gives you the slope, and it gives you this tangent value. So let's look at one more example, find the tangent of 45 degrees. Well, the tangent of 45 degrees, if we think about it on the unit circle, a rotation of 45 is halfway here. And so we're looking at the point cos 45, sine 45 here. So again, the tangent's going to be the ratio of these two. So tan of 45 degrees is equal to sine of 45 over cos of 45. You could also convert this to radians, right? A pi over 4. But regardless, what is the sine of 45 degrees? Well, the sine of 45 degrees is 1 over radical 2. And that's the same for cosine, 1 over radical 2 which then we get some number over itself. What is that equal to always? That's equal to one. And so why does this make sense? Tangent of, the, the tangent of 45 equals one. Well, the slope of the line that has an angle of 45 degrees is up one over one, right? So the delta y over delta x is equal to 1. And this is the optimal angle to launch projectiles for to maximize distance. It's it's the it's the 45 degree angle. So, but this slope here is what the tangent represents. So, what is the rise over run of the line that passes through that point cos 45 sin 45. So, hopefully that makes sense. So, tangent's the slope it's a ratio. What's the problem that comes up with ratios? There's only one real problem that we have to avoid with ratios, and that is what? If I have some number over another number, this bottom number can't be zero. Right? That's the only kind of thing we got to look out for, that they have a limited domain. We can't ever have the denominator be zero because it's undefined. So is that going to be an issue for us? Well, how is tangent defined? Tangent is defined to be sine of theta over cosine theta. Is this thing ever equal to zero? And then you say to yourself, yes, all the time, right? Is equal to zero infinitely many times. So what does that mean? It means that we have several vertical asymptotes, and several I mean infinitely. 
So infinitely many vertical asymptotes. Where are they going to occur? Well, they're going to occur wherever cosine equals zero. Where are the asymptotes for uh, y equals tan theta or y equals tan x? Well, we think about the cosine curve. So between 1 and negative 1 is what cosine does. And it keeps doing this. And so when does cosine equal 0? Well, here's pi, here's 2 pi. It occurs here and here, where it crosses the x-axis, right? So it happens at pi over 2. It happens at 3 pi over 2. It happens again at 5 pi over 2. 7 pi over 2, etc., etc. So you're seeing odd multiples of pi moving forward. And then the same in the opposite direction, right? So negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. This pattern will continue. It's continually hitting 0 at this distance of pi away from each other. So tangent's going to look significantly different, right? It's going to have a vertical asymptote every pi over 2, or every uh, odd multiple of pi over 2. So how it actually looks is you can think of it starting at 0, because what's the tangent of 0? Well, tan of 0 is sine of 0 over cos of 0, which is going to be 0 over 1. So I would let you go and generate for all the interesting points, what's happening. But here we know at the value of zero, the input of zero, it's at output of zero. And then as we move forward, sine increases, cosine increases, um, and we start to see that the value does something like this until we approach pi over 2 where we know there are there is a vertical asymptote and so it increases and diverges to positive infinity and in the other direction when we're over here at like a tan of let's say what value here is negative pi over 4 so tan of negative pi over 4 what's this well, it's really the tan of negative 45 degrees, which is going to be negative 1. So it'd be somewhere like down here, or its mirror image is up here. And so it's decreasing on this interval. But we know that there's a vertical asymptote here, and so it actually diverges down to negative infinity here. So it does this weird kind of S wave that shoots off to negative infinity and positive infinity. And it is periodic because its functions that define it are periodic. So it keeps doing this over and over and over. And every, pi over, every odd pi over 2, it has a uh, vertical asymptote again. And this keeps happening here and here. And so if I click on, on Desmos, what this looks like, we zoom out a bit, you'll see you get these kind of uh, wave-like things that shoot off the map. So this is really interesting. It's very different. Tangent is called what we call pi periodic. Tangent is pi periodic. Whereas sine and cosine are two pi periodic, it completes its period in a length of pi, right? From negative pi over two to pi over two. And the other things to know about tangent, all the same principles apply when it comes to A stretching vertically, B affecting the frequency, C affecting the, affecting the horizontal shift, and D affecting the uh, vertical shift.
So knowing its starting point where it crosses through the x-axis at 0, 0, it has asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, you can do some work and you'll definitely have some practice with what shifts will look like with these parameters and how that manifests in the graph. Okay, so let's see here if we just want to go back and check out on our new graph this periodic function where our previous examples lie. So tangent of 45, so if we input x equals pi over 4, because that's 45 degrees, we should get a value of 1 here, and we do. So when we input pi over 4, we know the height of this curve is 1. We know if we input a height of pi over 2, the curve should never touch this point. If we zoom out far enough, we see that it heads towards that value but never touches. So we do have a um, vertical asymptote there. So those are the big ideas here from this section. Number one, tangent is the slope of the radius or the line passing through that angle or forming that angle with the x-axis, any way you want to word that. And we know that the tangent graph is pi periodic. It has issues with its uh, denominator frequently hitting zero at odd multiples of pi over two, and that's why its graph looks kind of weird. Um, but that its outputs match up what we know to be the slopes of these lines passing through those angles. So tangent is used all over the place. It's used in engineering. It's used in construction. Uh, you know, anytime you'd be interested in steepness and angles being related to that, tangent's going to come into play, and you can bet that happens a lot. But to remember very much this definition of tangent, that it is defined in terms of sine and cosine, is going to go a long way for you. It's not necessarily its own separate thing to memorize, but its, its components are functions that we're already familiar with. So I hope you found this helpful, and I'll have a few uh, worked examples in this section for your um, assistance going through these problems. All right, enjoy. Enjoy.